Hello, Fight fans. We have made it to another big fight weekend, uh, perhaps the biggest fight in female boxing history, women's boxing history, excuse me, between unified champion Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. It's been a long time coming. We've had a lot of fanfare, but now it's time to make a decision. Who is going to win this fight? And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I have been flip-flopping back and forth. Uh, for most of the promotion, I've been going with Amanda Serrano by majority decision. Now I'm starting to falter, not because of anything I saw at the weigh-in, but just looking at the styles of both women. Number one, we know Katie Taylor is a little bit older, a couple years older, a lot more wear and tear. She's even said so herself that she feels like she's been in training camp her entire life in some form or fashion. However, you can look at that as possibly a benefit. I mean, when you look at the experience gap between the two of them, Katie Taylor has faced a much, much tougher competition. She's won the majority of, or pretty much all of her belts in the ring, no vacant titles, as opposed to Toronto, who of course she holds the record of I think uh, seven different weight classes with women, but a good chunk of those titles were vacant titles that she picked up. So the experience edge goes to Taylor, and that means she knows different ways to win. She's been in there with different styles. We've seen her fight on the front foot against people like Sharapova. We've seen her, you know, stalk people like Natasha Jonas, who are, you know, bigger than her at 5'8", reach advantage. She was still able to be aggressive and take the fight inside. Uh, we've seen her fight off the back foot before. Serrano, just looking at her, she seems like she's going to have the strength advantage. She seems much stronger heavier on the foot, those very good body shots, especially from the southpaw stance with that uh, left hand. And very, very dangerous if she gets you on the ropes. I mean, she's very dangerous there and she's very dangerous in exchanges. She hurts a lot of fighters when there's exchanges, not just to the head, but also to the body. You know, we saw what she did with Miriam Gutierrez, what she did to her face. And when she stopped her Bermudez in her last knockout, it was on counter body shots in the delay reaction. So when I'm looking at both of them, I know I said earlier that you know, I've been thinking Serrano's gonna win just based on their styles in a tight fight. But now I'm thinking I might be leaning towards Katie Taylor to pull it out also by majority or split decision. I think Katie's gonna use her footwork. I think she's gonna have Serrano turning and guessing as far as what's gonna be happening. Sometimes she's going to lead behind that uh, jab, and other times she's going to look to counter punch. And one underrated thing is I don't think Serrano has seen a fighter with the speed that Katie Taylor had regarding her hand speed. So I think it's going to be jarring for her in those early rounds, and I think those early rounds are going to be pivotal in helping Katie to <clears throat> excuse me, get an early lead and be able to eke it out based on that early lead, because I think down the stretch, uh, Serrano's size, the clinching that's going to happen. I think Serrano's going to be throwing her around in the clinching, in the clinches. And then once they're exchanging, that's where I think Serrano's going to shine through. You know, she has a great left, I call it almost like a bolo shot to the body of her left hand. I think that's when Katie's going to start wearing down. But I think it's going to be too little, too late. And I think Katie Taylor is going to do enough work early on with her faster hands and being able to dictate terms early on that she's going to be able to hang on enough to get that close majority or split decision. So I want to know what you guys think. You know, we're only a couple hours away. Do you think Katie Taylor is going to retain and keep all her titles? Or do you think it's going to be a youth situation where uh, Toronto is just too strong and pulls it out?